With the recent legalization of marijuana in Colorado, talk of ganja is all the rage today. Is it harmful? Is it harmless? Should it be legal? Should it be illegal? What kind of authority does the federal government have? The problem is that a lot of information out there is dead wrong. So I'm here in Ann Arbor, Michigan, one of the first cities to actually decriminalize the drug and home to a few more than enthusiastic supporters. Free the weed! In order to get to the bottom of the issue. Marijuana, should it be legalized? Yeah. Good thing. Um, I definitely think that it should be legal. Yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a good idea. Government's cracking down on unhealthy snacks and vending machines. Big gulps banned in New York, I'm sure you've heard of this. Good idea, bad idea? I think that it's a good idea. I don't want to say some people have reached the point where maybe they shouldn't make their own decisions, but... I think that's what it's becoming. I think it's kind of good, you know, because then, uh, you know, it's better for everyone's health. Think marijuana should be legalized? Um, yeah. I mean, you can do whatever you want to your own body. Except the big gulp. <laughs> Touche. Oh, big gulps, huh? All right. Well, see you later. This banned, this legal. Now, there are some people who think that the federal government does not have the authority to make drugs illegal regardless of how harmless they may be, and that's a fully legitimate discussion to have. However, among everybody that we asked, everyone thought that marijuana should be legal and not one made a constitutional argument. They all actually said, It's way less harmful than a lot of things, like such as alcohol. I think it's just another drug like alcohol. It's not really harming anyone. It doesn't really cause harm in most people's life and certainly less harm than alcohol. So considering that this is the premise under which the discussion of marijuana legalization is now being discussed, it's important to find out if it's true. So we sat down with Dr. Phyllis Boniface, a doctor who specializes in psychiatric care and more importantly, the possible effects of marijuana. It's actually very damaging and to compare it with alcohol, I mean, just to give you a basis for comparison, humans are designed to metabolize alcohol in the liver at a certain rate per hour. The brain is largely fat, and this drug is stored in fat. And so what happens is after the intoxication is long over, we have a drug that's hanging around exerting an effect on your nervous system for weeks to months. People who smoke at a young age have a much higher incidence of psychosis and psychotic disorders. I am a former community college history teacher who did time in a federal Christian Zionist drug gulag. Um, we think that there's a gene that predisposes people to schizophrenia, for example. People here work for the military industrial complex that kill people all around the world. And when people are exposed to marijuana, they have an onset of their illness about three years before we normally would see it. And their psychosis is much worse. The entire drug war is a fraud. The reason why marijuana and other drugs are kept illegal right. is because if they were legalized, the Pentagon, the CIA, and the White House would miss the money. Now, forgive me my crazy the old pothead speak is a little rusty, but allow me to try and translate for a second. The war on drugs waged by this government has been largely ineffective. In legalizing drugs here in the United States, I believe that we would reduce the failed war on drugs, decrease crime, and likely see a result of less overall use, as in countries abroad who have followed such a policy. There's this idea that legalizing marijuana would free up a ton of space in our penitentiaries, but it's just not true. I have the numbers here in front of me, okay? Less than 0.1% of state prisoners were marijuana possession offenders with no prior sentences. Let's take that a step further. Only 1.4% of state prisoners were drug offenders held for crimes only involving marijuana. You said you did time in a federal penitentiary yeah, right. for nothing more than marijuana possession. Just, no, distri attempt, attempted distribution. Attempted distribution, what's right. that exactly? Well, that means I was trying to sell it. When I sold p marijuana to my friends and my customers, I was providing a community service. Any prior infractions? Uh, a, a DUIs. So when you think of prisons filled with people like this, it's actually more like this. Okay, a few things. Firstly, here in the United States, where marijuana has either been decriminalized or legalized, its usage tends to increase more than some of you may know. We went to community high school here in Ann Arbor to ask teenagers about their experiences with marijuana. The results were shocking. Have you ever smoked marijuana? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I have. Yep. I have. Yes. Does your, so your mom knows? Now she does. I've been doing it probably three years now. 15, been smoking for three years. You know what I was doing at 12? Playing pogs. Out of all the students we'd interviewed, only two had not smoked marijuana. Their biggest reason for trying it Surprise! 
harmless. There's no bad side effects. I don't think it can be necessarily harmful. It's not like a bad drug. It's a plant. It's well, you mean it's natural? Yeah. So is uranium. Well, after all, it's got nothing on a 16 ounce Mr. Pibb, but funnily enough, the perception of marijuana being harmless, as largely pushed by today's marijuana lobby, has statistically resulted in increased use among teenagers. We know that it affects myelinization, and myelinization is what determines the maturity and the development of the brain. People don't know it, but your brain is actually developing into your early to mid 20s. When we're altering the myelinization, we're actually altering the way your brain will function for the rest of your life. That being said, the kids do seem to think that it might be more prevalent here than nationally because... In Ann Arbor, yes, I guess. Everybody seems to have some. Shocker. Despite what people say, the more lenient the drug laws, the more likely people, including kids, are to light up. What about the idea that ending the drug war would reduce crime, put drug cartels out of a job? You think maybe these cartels who operate in illegal activity? We'll do else. Yeah, probably. I mean, yeah, but I mean, there's still you still get that extra revenue, right? Well, it's like here in Ann Arbor, right? It's illegal essentially to use it medicinally. We just right. stop by the high school. What people do is buy it from the dispensary, get a prescription, and they go sell it at a high school. Yeah, I know some people that have done that. Yeah, you know people that have done that. I may or may not. Yeah. Yes, it appears to be that people who make money through crime tend to find another way to make money through crime. Keep the change, you filthy animal. So, if we legalize drugs, would that really be better for today's law-abiding citizens? The myth that nobody's ever died from a THC-related accident is just not true. Well, the reason people believe that it hasn't happened is because it's a tougher process to go through to test for it. You smell something, rabbit? Fear. I can take your uh, blood alcohol level just by a breath test. You, uh... You fellas been doing a bit of boozing, have you? Sucking back on grandpa's old cough medicine? It's not a um, Miranda right or anything like that. It's just based on your driver's license. Where if I want to get your THC level, I have to get a warrant to take your blood from you or urine. You're crazy! Do I want to have it legal for me to do? Well, then the police have to have more rights to be able to check you for it. And where, where, do, you, where do people fall on that, on that line? And as a matter of fact, there is some data to suggest that legalization actually increases crime, uh, as seen here from the LAPD DEA. Now, the reason the numbers might be different from the crime increase during the Prohibition era is because of one key difference. During Prohibition, the American government decided to suddenly ban an activity in which a vast majority of Americans engaged. In legalizing drugs, you'd be doing the exact opposite. You would now be allowing and in some ways encouraging a practice in which currently only a minority of Americans engage. Listen, at the end of the day, I can understand somebody saying, okay, marijuana is harmful. Legalizing it will likely result in increased usage and have possibly some negative societal ramifications here in the United States. But the federal government does not have the authority and it's been largely ineffective in waging the war on drugs. That's a completely legitimate argument and there can be arguments made on both sides. What I have a problem with, however, is the discussion being based on a premise that is a lie. That is a huge disservice to our political discourse today, and more importantly, generations of the future. You need any more proof? Palestinians have been in camps for about 60, and you Jews put them there. Israel okay, first off, I am not Jewish. And anyways, okay, you look Jewish anyways.